Congratulations. First of all, um, let me just say, um, my name is Rosemary Adigor, and I'm the PR and Marketing Director for Asim Asimio um, UK chapter. So I've got two questions for you. Um, first, um, when you formed the government with uh, His Excellency President Kenyatta, he treated you more like a principal. And in that case, um, you were uh, given some of the most powerful dockets that um, as any deputy president, we've never seen that sort of. So that was um, generosity from his part. But you also played because you also brought the number with you. So it was like this. So what I want to ask is, um, what are you going to do different? Having seen the level of corruption, unprecedented corruption that engulfed our country to an extent whereby people can't even afford to buy milk, people can't even afford to buy even just oil. And yet we have people who are, they are just rolling in lots of money. They are just, they've got, they, can, they can have a car from Monday to Sunday. And Kenyans are starving. Second, second question, please, because we've got lots and lots yeah, of questions, yeah. please. So I just ask you, what are you going to do different to Kenyans? Second question, should you not win the election, are you going to concede defeat and be an advocate for um, peace in our country? Because we know the story, and we are all eyes open. We are watching. So thank you. Um, and lastly, I just no, want no, to... No, 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 two, two, two. The lady in the middle here, please, uh, Ahmed. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go for three plus two. <laughs> Excellency, Deputy President, thank you for sharing uh, with us uh, your uh, convictions. Uh, I, have, I am Nashwet Meguar, uh, uh, Head of practical practi uh, Political Practice at uh, Concerto uh, Global Public Affairs. I have two questions. The first one is a polit more political one. Um, as we all know, uh, on 9 uh, August, uh, there are many risks uh, for a, a, a fair uh, election. So on which tools do you rely to ensure a fair, transparent and inclusive election and how can the international community support you this way? Uh, the second question is more economic. Um, how can uh, the international uh, investors plug to your uh, bottom-up uh, platform uh, vision to create employment and value in Kenya and how can they become, as you say, uh, true hustlers for Kenya? Thank you very much. And there was one gentleman there, you, sir. Uh, yeah. One question, please, because I want to try and get a diverse number no, of course, number of course. Of um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, His Excellency, uh, my name is Lashan Lethbridge, um, and my question for you today actually is just, uh, well, the one. Uh, Kenya's shared prosperity in the region of East Africa can only happen if Kenya protects its borders and... Uh, uh, I'd actually like to hear your thoughts on um, the internal security of Kenya and its armed forces and uh, what your thoughts are uh, to have a prosperous Kenya and a safe Kenya. Right. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I have been deputy president for nine years. Uh, I don't know which dockets were given to me because uh, when President Uhuru Kenyatta formed government after the election. We've always had one president. We've never had two. And the responsibility over government has never been shared between Uhuru Kenyatta and myself. Um, our first term, we ran a coalition government but I can tell you there was no single opportunity where my party held a PG outside President Uhuru's uh, party. We had one parliamentary group, one government, one uh, program, and it was all clear. Um, so, uh, there were no dockets that were given to me. I didn't appoint no minister anywhere. Everybody was appointed by the president of Kenya. And um, the difference maybe you could ask is between our first term and our second term. In our first term, granted, I played my role as deputy president, 
the president assigned me many responsibilities, which I discharge with distinction from where I sit. And that is why in our first term, we rolled out our plan to build the standard gauge railway. We have built 700 kilometers. I was part and parcel of the entire, entire delivery plan. We set out to build 10,000 kilometers of tarmac road in Kenya. By June this year, in three months or so, we will have actually done 11,000 kilometers. I sat long hours with officials in government to design how that was going to happen. Same case to our TVET program. Same case to all the other programs that we delivered on our first term. And to demonstrate our success, we were re-elected in our second term with twice the margin we had been elected in 2013, clearly demonstrating that the people of Kenya were happy with our delivery. Unfortunately, in our second term, because of the political dynamics that came into play, uh, the president told me that he wanted to do things differently. And he didn't want what had become normal in Kenya that this was Uhuru. -to. He wanted a Uhuru. Uh, and I had a discussion, a candid discussion with him. And uh, when he told me that's what he wanted, and he wanted to run this government because he wanted his legacy alone as the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya. I was not fussy about it because he decided that whatever I did in the, second, in the first term to coordinate the government uh, programs, um, work on uh, assignments that would consolidate uh, our plan, he decided that he wanted somebody else to do it. And I didn't complain. So, uh, such, um, executive uh, uh, order number one came into force, establishing uh, a different arrangement in government. Um, and, and, and I had no, I had no quarrel with it because that's how the president wanted to deliver on uh, his second term. Unfortunately, uh, the people who the president maybe gave that responsibility failed him because the whole big four plan fell apart. The housing plan never took off. The universal health coverage never took off. The whole space on agricultural transformation faltered. And we didn't see any of that plan. In fact, at some point, it forced the president to change the plan. So we went away from the original plan of uh, Big Four. We ended up with another plan called BBI, changing the constitution, working on all the, the rest of it, which unfortunately again went up in smoke because it was purely unconstitutional. So, um, uh, how do I do things differently? If we had done things the way we had done in our first term, making sure there are clear lines between the opposition and government so that government can be held to account, so that the opposition can play its role, so that instead of the opposition being lackeys and being brokers and being the ones organizing cartels in government, and participating in corruption. They should be providing oversight. You're correct. You know, Kenya has, is in a worse place today. There is no oversight. The fellows who are supposed to provide oversight in the opposition are the ones driving the scandals from Kemsa to all these. They are the ones participating in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the troubles. Uh, coming to my grandlady here, 
Yes, there are people who are skeptical about whether we will have free, fair elections, and especially peaceful elections. The point of elections being violent for the last three elections has largely been the refusal by participants of the election to accept the outcome of the election. That has been the point of departure. I can say with a lot of confidence that uh, the last two elections did not have tribal uh, anglings. We largely ran uh, 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 two formations, one in NASA, one in Jubilee, that largely represented the face of Kenya on both sides. The only challenge that came is when our competitors refused to accept the outcome of the election, organized demonstrations, swore themselves in, did all manner of things, and drove the country into violence. The undertaking I, I give as a candidate, and I have done it publicly, is that William Ruto will accept the outcome of the election whichever way it goes. <clears throat> and I want all the other candidates to make the same commitment. They have not made the same commitment. They are doji about whether they will accept the outcome of this election. In fact, many on that side, it's, on, it's in the public domain, have said they will rig the election, right? Many on that side have said, to those who care, even if William Ruto wins this election, Uhuru Kenyatta will not hand over power to him. They've said that in public, right? So. What we need is those of us as Kenyan leaders, the Kenyan public, and our friends in the international community to speak to all the candidates so that they can commit in public unequivocally that they will accept the outcome of this election. <laughs> and I say so. And I say so, especially the notorious ones <laughs> who have never accepted the outcome of any election. Until they commit that if they lose this election, which is most likely going to be the case, that they will accept the outcome of the election. That way, we can guarantee peace after the election by making sure that all the participants do what I have done publicly. Um, the gentleman has talked about P, uh, the, 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 the whole security situation. Part of my engagement in, uh, in, in no, let, let me reframe it first. Addressing ourselves, addressing ourselves to the inclusive economic model goes a long way in managing the security situation within our country. Because many of, many of at times, the contestations and the, 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 the conflicts are around resource sharing. The, the sooner we address ourselves, increase the possibility of our pastoralists, make sure that we, we, we enable our pastoralists, enhance their productivity, enhance the productivity of, of, our, of our farming communities, build resilience, and make sure that uh, we, 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 we using the inclusive economic model, we carry everybody along. We will pacify the country within. 
and working with our development, with our international partners. And this is the discussion I was having with the State Department. And hopefully, I will have that statement with the Minister for Defense and the Minister for Africa tomorrow here in the UK is on how we can build on the partnership that ex exists at the moment to deal with violent extremism and to deal with the challenge of terrorism and to deal with the issues that are cross-border, how we can build that alliance around Amazon, around the partnership we have to secure not just Kenya, but to secure the region so that we can make it available for investors and for partners to work with us in the progress of our country. So, uh